In the 60s and 70s, Star Trek had already attracted the kinds of fans that give the rest of us a bad name, with the general public throwing everyone into the boat with the guys who dress like their favorite characters, buy all kinds of useless memorabilia, and of course write really bad fan fiction. The latter generally fell into two groups, slash fic, which said that Kirk and Spock were gay lovers, with McCoy and Scott occasionally getting into the act as well, and Mary Sue fic where the fans, typically the younger ones, portrayed themselves as part of the Enterprise crew who saved the day while everyone who was actually from the show just sat back and watched. You may be wondering about that name. Well, in 1974, a fan named Paula Smith finally got tired of all this crap her fellow Trekkies were putting out, so she submitted a parody story to the fanzine The Menagerie titled A Trekkie's Tale. It was very short, but very dense, too, with everything both she and people today hate about those kinds of stories. For the curious, here it is, a Trekkie's tale. Gee, golly, gosh, Glorioski, thought Mary Sue as she stepped onto the bridge of the Enterprise. Here I am, the youngest lieutenant in the fleet, only fifteen and a half years old. Captain Kirk came up to her. Oh, lieutenant, I love you madly. Will you come to bed with me? Captain, I am not that kind of girl. You're right, and I respect you for it. Here, take over the ship for a minute while I go get some coffee for us. Mr. Spock came onto the bridge. What are you doing in the command seat, lieutenant? The captain told me to. Flawlessly logical. I admire your mind. Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, and Mr. Scott beamed down with Lieutenant Mary Sue to Rigel 37. They were attacked by green androids and thrown into prison. In a moment of weakness, Lieutenant Mary Sue revealed to Mr. Spock that she, too, was half Vulcan. Recovering quickly, she sprung the lock with her hairpin, and they all got away back to the ship. But back on board, Dr. McCoy and Lieutenant Mary Sue found out that the men who had beamed down were seriously stricken by the jumping cold robbies. Mary Sue, less so. While the four officers languished in sick bay, Lieutenant Mary Sue ran the ship, and ran it so well she received the Nobel Priest Pies, the Vulcan Order of Gallantry, and the Tralfamadorian Order of Good Guyhood. However, the disease finally got to her, and she fell fatally ill. In the sick bay, as she breathed her last, she was surrounded by Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, and Mr. Scott, all weeping unashamedly at the loss of her beautiful youth and youthful beauty, intelligence, capability, and all-around niceness. Even to this day, her birthday is a national holiday of the Enterprise. So like I said, it's very short, but perfectly illustrates just why everyone hates these kinds of characters. Unfortunately, Gene Roddenberry himself didn't get the message and actually put one into Star Trek The Next Generation. For three and a half years, viewers suffered through scenes featuring Wesley Crusher, teenage son of the ship's doctor, mechanical genius, and all-around nice guy who everyone loved. Did I mention Wesley was Gene Roddenberry's middle name? Naturally, the fans revolted on Moss, and halfway through the fourth season, Wesley was finally shipped off to Starfleet Academy and only made a few guest appearances from then on. Still, that hasn't stopped other writers from putting Mary Sue characters out there. Probably the most infamous one right now is Lana Lang from Smallville, but there's also Aragon from the Inheritance Trilogy, Captain Jack and Gwen on Torchwood, and even James Bond himself until Daniel Craig humanized him again. The simple moral is, creating a character like this is never, ever a good idea, and will only make your audience hate you. Please, think of the children.